Welcome back, everybody, to How to Design Your Next Career with me, Josh Levine, and with me is Justin Lukitz. And we are from the, well, we do a lot of different things, but this is under the auspices of the MBA in Design Strategy. And we're going to review just very quickly before we get into episode four, what we've done before and what is design, this key piece of designing, the design part of designing your next career. So just to take it away. Here we go. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if you remember right away back in episode two, we talked about understanding yourself, right? And your goals and ambitions, but also some of your, you know, your future design constraints, those kinds of things. And we talked about that in episode three as well. All right. And this starts with, with empathy. Um, in the last episode, episode three, we talked about creating and maybe even co-creating lots of different options for your said future. What we're here to talk about to you in, in this episode is basically running experiments and testing some of those options. We call these prototypes, right? Uh, prototype, prototypes can be lots of different things here. Of course, prototypes could certainly be prototypes of hardware or software or whatever. But did you know you can also prototype your career options in some really interesting and, and unique ways? in order for you to figure out what's what, test your assumptions, those kinds of things. Now, before I get going, let's just talk about what a prototype is, right? Uh, a prototype and prototyping is all about sort of getting information, data, uh, in order to help you make well-informed decisions, right? How, how many people have gone out there and gotten a job based on a title uh, or gone after jobs, maybe even based on a title? Uh, and then learn very quickly, like, oh, this is not all it was cracked up to be. Well, you probably could have prototyped that. So using prototyping and some of the things that we'll talk about here, uh, you know, we'll do a few different things for you. First, it reduces risk, right? If you go out there and you can find some ways to test what some career decision might look like before you make that leap, it reduces risk, right? It reduces risk because you can make informed decisions, but also maybe because if you already have a job, uh, you don't have to quit that job for something and, and take this big leap because maybe that next thing isn't right for you, right? So you can, you know, you can hedge your bets a little bit. Uh, it also will expose for sure, it exposes assumptions uh, about some of what you may be looking at, right? You may not know until you actually go do this thing. Uh, and then it starts uncovering some of those assumptions. And I think a lot of what we'll talk about here today and even in the next episode is just engaging others, right? Finding other people with similar interests or people who could support you, uh, maybe provide you feedback, those kinds of things, right? That's what prototyping is really great for because what you're trying to do is be a little bit vulnerable with what you're, you know, what you're interested in. And then you get feedback and you have discussions about it. And, and generally people love to help each other. And so this often is a, a really great way of engaging others. So Josh and I came up with a, a couple different kinds of prototypes. And again, we're going to follow up with, uh, you know, with something I think that will be helpful uh, for all of this. So what are the first ways you can go prototype your next career is by really just prototyping a conversation. A lot of people call these informational interviews. I don't think Josh and I really like the informational interview as much because it often it feels like you're, you're interviewing for a job without really interviewing for a job. When we think about it as prototyping a conversation, what you're really going to do is, is you're gonna find people who maybe have the job you want or people who would hire for that job or people in that sector or whatever it might be. Uh, and then you go have a conversation where you're asking lots of questions. You're not looking for them to interview you. You're actually interviewing them because you're looking for information about how they do what they do, how they got into it, uh, what the, their favorite parts of that job are, you know, what the results look like, all those kinds of things, who they hire, all those kinds of things. And it can help you make a better decision, right? Um, if you're prototyping a conversation, you, of course, want to come up with a list of open-ended questions. You want to go into these conversations without making any assumptions about 
what that job looks like and and what the day to day might look like, or being aware of your assumptions, or being and, certainly being and aware, challenging. Of I mean, that's the specific point you're making. Is yeah, you maybe think like what's the list? Like list your assumptions and then ask questions around those. To totally, because you want to you want to burst your bubble as quickly as possible because it's not going to be what you want. You're not going to be exactly That's what right. you're thinking. So right. learn about it and and learn and, and what are the edges of it? Because I think part of what we're talking about here, career wise, is you're going to go and talk to people that are in related fields or in a field that might that is somehow maybe connected to or has an aspect of what you're interested in but isn't exactly what it is is right. isn't exactly what it might be right we're talking about the next career 10 years down the five or 10 years down the road totally so you need to kind of explore what those pieces and parts are beyond the job description because you don't it's not exact it's not going to be exactly what this person is 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 doing currently today that's right that's right. But they they will certainly have, uh, you know, ideas about where it's going based on where it's been and what they do today and so forth. But you're right, Josh, like, you know, figuring out what are my assumptions and then not assuming those things in this conversation is a big deal. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I mentioned it before, you know, I don't like to call it. I don't think either one of us like to call it, a, you know, informational interview because it's not right. It's just it's just a, a conversation. So don't treat it like an interview. Um, and when Josh and I were talking about this earlier, we also, he, he had a really good point. He said, Hey, you know, you definitely also in an informational conversation, uh, you know, a prototype, you want to figure out who else should you talk to? Who else do you know? Who else could you connect me with? Because I've, this has been such a great conversation. I'd love to learn more. Right. So go out there and find other people who can give you more information than just maybe the one person. That They've with. spent years in this network and yes. building this. So tap into that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm interested in these aspects of what you're doing. Is there somebody else who could help me understand more right. deeply these pieces? Oh, you know, who you should talk to is, and yeah. then you, Oh yes. Yeah, great. Would you be willing to make a introduction? That would be wonderful. Yep. And it, you'll find that every time people are going to be helpful here because people love to help other people, especially when it comes to uh, a career and specifically a career that, you know, that someone's excited about or has been in for a long time or whatever it may be. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, you know, the second one goes along certainly with the first, but, you know, did you know you could also prototype experiences uh, this is all about, you know, learning something by trying it firsthand on a small scale or short term basis, um, you know, even temporarily, maybe even for free. You, I like to think about, you know, this happens all the time in law enforcement and firefighting and emergency services, things like that. There's this idea of a drive along, right, where or a ride along where you could go to your, you know, whoever your community uh, police or peace force is, you know, and go ask, hey, can I do a ride along? And they'll do that. They'll schedule you for a ride along because they're always not only looking to recruit, but they want people to understand what they're getting into before they get into it. Um, now, you could do this for a lot of different things. You could prototype by trying things uh, you know, by asking the same people that you're speaking with, you know, with your in your conversations, hey, would you mind if I sat in the office sometime and just sort of watched what you do? Or is there a project that I could be a part of um, that I could help with? And I just want to help because I just like to understand how you do what you do and, you know, and what it would mean to me, right? And in the same way, right, you want to do a lot of prep going into those conversations and then also those experiences. Uh, you want to qu prep questions before, of course, the same goes, you know, with not treating it like an interview because it's not. Uh, it's, it's you interviewing them uh, more than anything, but also understanding what assumptions you come into it with and, and not making assumptions necessarily about what you're going to be doing. I Imagine think, if, yeah. yeah, so... so Justin, one of the things that um, through 
by thinking through this, right? You've kind of the the analog here is the is the is the ride along. Right. And in our kind of highly distributed world, sure, like I think there could be an opportunity if someone, you know, came over here and, you know, they wanted to like spend the day with me. Great. Right. Happy to do it. I don't know if that's realistic, but I think what you yeah. pointed out, which is how can I support you? How can I, yeah. you know, what can I do for, you know, to work on this project or, you know, just, you know, invite me into these meetings might be a, a nice way to do it in kind of this distributed world so that you can have, you can oftentimes you don't know what questions you need to ask. Right. Yet. And right. so I think that's a really great example. Justin's going to share how he did this uh in 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 just in just a few minutes so you really get a sense of you know w what it is it's more than just a, a ride along that's right yeah that's right um it's it's kind of like a fly on the wall right uh it's not just a ride along often it's like you know being part of something so that you can really interrogate what that thing is all about i put this in here because these are something you know these are things we do every day uh in the dmba program is prototype you know, good services, business models, but also new career options, things like that. So as Josh mentioned, I, I wanted to put in a personal example because it isn't always riding along in a, in a police car or something like that. Um, I have a few examples of this, you know, where I've been the police officer, but all the times when I've been the, you know, the ride along person. Um, in this case, this is where I did a ride along and I switched a career. So way, way, way back when I worked for a really cool uh, design software company called Autodesk. And I, and I ran uh, some of the infrastructure products there. And I, I really liked that this job. I really still love the company. I like the job, but I also knew there was something else for me out there. I was kind of ready to make a change into something else for, for many reasons. Now, I had the, you know, I had the, the fortunate circumstances that I also was accepted and enrolled in the DMBA program. Uh, and I went through that program and learned a ton. Uh, and through that program, I, I wasn't sure where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do, but I came across this guy. He was a guest lecturer. His name is Patrick Vanderpile. Uh, he runs a really successful design strategy company based in Amsterdam uh, called Business Models Inc. or BMI. Now, he was a guest lecturer in one of my classes, and it just like sparks went off when he talked. I could totally see where he, where he was going, and I could re was really interested in how he did what he was doing uh, and how he was helping all these companies he was helping. So I, I went up to him afterwards and said, hey, Patrick, would you mind uh, if we not only A, stayed in touch, and B, we maybe talked a little bit after class, I, I'd buy you a coffee. But would you also mind if someday, you know, if you have a workshop in the U.S., if I could come along and uh, I'll do anything you like, I'll carry your post-its, I'll, I'll, you know, carry all the Sharpies, I will be your assistant for the day, I'll be a ghost if you want me to be a ghost, anything you want, I just want to be there and be a fly on the wall to see how you do what you do, because I'm really interested in it. I don't need to be paid, I just want to be there for a few hours to, to help. Uh, you, but also to understand what you do. And he said, absolutely, Justin, uh, I'll be in the US in two months, come along, I've got a big client project that I could actually use a little bit of help with. Uh, and definitely, you can carry my post its and, and, and Sharpies. Great. So I did that. Uh, and through that interaction, not only did I learn a lot, but I kept in touch with Patrick. And then I did a couple more with him, uh, all above board. I was still working at Autodesk. I let my manager know what I was doing. And he, he was very supportive of this. Uh, and I was taking vacation days to do this. And at the end of it, I, I learned enough to say, this is something I really want to do. Um, and eventually then I opened the same practice in the U S and then worked with Patrick on this thing. And he was my CEO. And so this was a, you know, this was a story, at least a personal story about how it worked for me. And it allowed me doing this sort of ride along with Patrick, you know, it, prototyping the conversations and the experience allowed me to test something before I ever left, left Autodesk and this really great company and salary and benefits that came with it. Uh, but also learn enough to know that I could do this and that it was something that was going to be exciting for me too. So 
that's it for today. Now we wanted to make sure that you, you knew that, you know, we'll follow up with this, uh, with this episode with also how to tap into your community for help. Just like Justin was yep. utilizing the DMBA program. Um, great opportunity, lots of uh, guest lectures, lots of people, peers and, and alumni. Um, you can do it. You don't need to enroll, although we'd love for you to enroll in the DMBA program. Yeah, sure. um, but there's lots of opportunities to do that otherwise. And that's one of the key pieces to really being able to succeed in the future is cat tapping the community. So definitely check out our next episode. Yep. And as always, you know, if you want to check out the DMBA, connect with us, uh, prototype some of these kinds of conversations with us as well. We're always happy to help and, uh, and we're here for you. All right. See you next time. Bye.